And now with assistant coach Travis Dodd. Travis, uh, can you use words to describe that game? It depends. Are we going to talk about the reserves? <laughs> I, thought, I, thought the res- I thought I did well with the reserves today. 6-1 win, resounding win, but... Um, yeah, the, the first team today um, it, it wasn't a it wasn't a pretty game for us. Um, unfortunately, you're not going to play to the best of uh, your ability every week, and and we accept as coaches that you have off games. I mean, we've all been there. We've played, uh, you know, at, uh, at a, a decent level. So yeah, we accept that you know players aren't going to be at 100 percent every time. But oh, you know, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating um, to. To give the instructions to players, and then you know it just it just doesn't happen. So yeah, look, I mean we're we're disappointed as from a coaching perspective. Um, the players are disappointed in themselves because you know we know that we're much better than that. Uh, look, we we remain undefeated, and um, you know we live to to fight another day. I think the important thing now for us is that we can continue on in the the preparation. Yes, the league's done and dusted, but. You know, we've got a bigger picture now with the, the MPL uh, Cup coming up, so we need to, to maintain momentum. So for us as a, as a club and as a playing group, there's still a lot to play for. It's not like we can afford to, to take it easy now because we're not in a position where we can just switch off and then switch back on in two or three weeks' time. You need to maintain that level week after week after week. So, look, it's, a, it's another challenge for the, for the boys to face, but hopefully one that we can get through. I suppose when you think about it, they've been up for 21 weeks, basically. Yeah. This is the 21st week of the, of the league. So they are entitled, I suppose, to one, but you wouldn't want them to uh, carry it for that to carry over, like a hangover to carry over until... Uh, the NPL national championships when they turn around. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's exactly it. It's you're coming to the back end of the season. You're starting to pick up niggling injuries. You know, we've had a couple of players that are crook this week, so it's it's a difficult one. You got to adjust training sessions to to suit you know mm. what players you've got available and, and numbers and that kind of stuff. So look, that's that's been a challenge during the season to do that, but. And at the end of the day, we need to, as coaching staff, we need to make that work. Um, we need to be able to put the right sessions on so that we can get the team up as best as possible for the weekend. So, yeah, we, we're not going to make any excuses. We played poorly today. Um, you know, we came away with the draw. So, reassess for, for next week and, you know, we look to uh, Sterling and then, you know, prepare ourselves for the the West Adelaide game. And uh, the loss of uh, Muralunda would have been uh, fairly big up there and uh, you could see that today with the, uh, is it just the fact that he's been playing so long now this season and it was very hard to adjust to life without him for a game? Yeah, I mean it, it shouldn't be um, because we're, uh, I mean we talk about, all coaches talk about having squads and relying on squads to squads win your championships and look, I think that's been true yeah. uh, for our team as well but you know Gus is in a rich vein of form mm. he's been scoring a truckload of goals and um, you know probably would have this type of game would have suited him but nevertheless um, you have to you have to make do with with the players that you've got available on any given day and look the quality of players that we put out in the field there's no doubt in my mind that it's a good enough team to, to play and beat Armadale but on today's uh, performance we didn't deserve the win and uh, just going on to Armadale, what a, a really a tenacious little side and a very young side. They, their back line, I believe, was just so young, all under 20, basically, and uh, they did, to a fair degree, control your forwards. Yeah, I mean, look, they, they made life very, very difficult for, for our front four or five, and, you know, that, that's what teams come out and, and set up to do against Bayswater. Mm. You know, they... They get their, their team behind the ball, and if we're not in a position, if we can't get the ball and play it quickly, you know, either through the wide areas to get balls into the box early, or you know, through the middle, play one twos in and around the box. If we don't do those early and and get the the opposition moving, then we make it much easier for the opposition. And I think today we did that for for Armadale. There was uh, you know numerous occasions where you know we had opportunities to get the ball in, we didn't. We. We, 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 we
lowered on the ball. Yeah, <laughs> where we just t- too hesitant on the ball, and we give an opportunity for Armadale to set up, and then you know it's happy days for him. Opportunities in the first half with Danny Dixon, you know, getting in behind the, the fullback and getting early balls into the box. That's when our chances get created, and, and we should have had maybe two or three in the first half. You know, ball ball missed the one on one. So those early chances, you, you convert them. Hager's had a good one. He put over. We convert them early in the first half. It's a completely different mm-hmm. ball game. We probably go away and, and win it, you know, three or four. But you know, to their credit, they they made it difficult, and we weren't able to break that down. And you know, they they come away with a, a goal in the the second half, the equaliser, and couldn't deal with it. So yeah, frustrating from a coach's point of view, but. You know, it's, it's it's one for the to chalk up as a, a learning experience. But uh, from the coach's point of view, I suppose you could always turn around and say that the decision to move Adam Tong up front paid dividends almost immediately. I know he's talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. Uh, um, you know, Tong, he, he, gave, he gave us something today that, that we didn't have, and that's uh, the, the big, you know, strong presence up there. Uh, you know, our... All of our strikers are, are slight and you know sharper and you know one twos off the ball and, and that kind of stuff. Whereas Tongi is more about holding the ball up, flicking it on, and you know he's more that brute force. Um, more direct. Yeah, much more direct. I didn't want to be so blunt, but yeah, yeah, more direct. And look. They, when we when we went towards that and and played direct to Tongi, um, he was a handful for him, mm. uh, and and it was against a, a young, you know, back four, and he was able to hold the ball up, get the turns in. When he got the turns in, I think he was getting a bit carried away, thinking that he was a striker. <laughs> I think he was. Yeah, we just got to remind him uh, on Tuesday night that um, you know he's still a centre half and. <laughs> Uh, just lay it off. Did you consider taking him straight back after he scored? Yeah, you know what we did. He did ask if he was going to go go back, but you know we were. You no, know, thought we were in a position where we were comfortable with Jamie Coyne at the back. Um, you know, a lot of experience there. Thought that it was going to work out that you know we'll just um, you know, leave him back there and leave Tongi up there to continue because you know it, it made a difference. It made a difference in the way that the game was going. Um, but unfortunately, um, you know when you're not switched on for for 90 minutes, you can get caught out. And you know to Armadale's credit, it was, uh, it was a decent finish. You know, mm. maybe uh, Devs, you know, did he should he have stayed? Possibly, but you know it's it's a split decision, split second decision. The, the one-on-one save that he made in the second half I thought was outstanding. That would have been save of the season, nearly. Yeah, look, he, he was talking about, Devs was talking about one uh, a couple of weeks ago, Sorrento, where he we pulled out top corner, but for me, that that was that was better. Um, you know, it was so clean the actual take of the ball. Yeah, look, the ability there of him to to stay on his feet until the last moment, uh, you know, and then get the ball out of the striker's feet. He, if the ball if the ball was at the other end, we would expect our strikers to score that 100 percent of the time. So, you know, if uh, that instance, Devon was outstanding. Okay, well. All we can hope is that uh, next week, especially with the presentation about to take place, that they will uh, sort of come prepared to play. So I think they can be prepared to play, just that they don't have the same off day. Yeah, well, that's it. We will accept, um, you know, we'll give them uh, one game out at uh, 22. <laughs> so they've had it now. And, um, you know, look. I think you're right. Next week, yeah, the trophy will be here, so that'll that'll bring a bit of extra atmosphere to the to the to the ground and to the boys. So, you know, hopefully we can put on a much better performance and and finish the season off on a high with three points. And Chris, by the way, did nominate you today to speak. Uh, he said that. He thought you deserved the opportunity at this stage of the season to actually speak on the team's behalf. I think it's important to mention as well that I've got a better record than Coiny now uh, as a coach because I haven't had a loss this season. So he's, uh, he's had a loss and a couple draws now and I've only had uh, one draw. So, you know, I'm uh, flying along. Maybe I'll teach him a thing or two at training this week. Thanks a million, Travis. Cheers, mate.